Welcome, friends, to another edition of TiffinCast. This time, it's all audio, thanks to a wonderful connection, uh, wonderful video connection uh, out of India. Uh, we're doing this all audio, so bear with us. Uh, I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm speaking with Sefi Bergerson, an Israeli photographer based in India. And he's a good friend of mine now. Uh, we've been friends for a number of years. I've followed his work. I'm a fan of his work. Uh, but most of all, he's just a very generous guy. Uh, when I went to India a few years ago, I just randomly called him up and I said, I'm, I'd love to come and meet with him. And I remember just how warm and hospitable his entire family was. It was, a, it was just a very memorable time. So, Safi, I would love to talk a little bit about your background and, and bring everybody up to speed up on your newest project, which is called Behind the Indian Veil, Weddings in India. I know you went to India uh, especially to make a book about uh, Indian weddings, and that's how you got started in Indian Indian wedding photography. Uh, clearly, you have been sort of a pioneer in this movement to capture Indian weddings as they're happening. All the chaos, all the color, all the beauty, all the craziness, and you've been able to do it so well. Well, uh... tell, tell, tell us a little bit about tell us a little bit about <laughs> how you got started in all of this. Well, I, uh, all right. Well, one small correction is that I was in India maybe five years before I started working on this book, uh, okay. a little more, maybe six years before. Um, my, my first book in India was, uh, was Street Food of India that was published uh, in 2009. Ah. Uh, and, uh, and this is the second book. And, and what happened with this book is that uh, after finishing Street Food of India, a friend had, uh, had uh, asked me to shoot her sister's wedding. And I said, listen, uh, I'm not a wedding photographer. She said, yes, but that's why I wanted you to shoot the wedding. And then incidentally, uh, the, uh, the next day, I went to see my publisher. And they asked, so now that you know, the Street Food of India book is complete, what are you going to do next? And I, you know, it's just like as a joke, I said, weddings. <laughs> and, uh, and they jumped in their chairs. And, you know, so like, oh, you, you got to do a book. You got to do a book. So that's how it started. And that's eventually what led me into wedding photography. And, and uh, when, you, when, when we met, you know, it's, right. um, uh, it became, you know, it became a passion. And then, uh, then one thing led to the other. And I started taking assignments. Um, so <clears throat> this is it. But, um, but uh, it goes back uh, many years even before that. I've, I've been a professional photographer since 1991. Indeed, uh, indeed. I, I was a commercial photographer in Israel, and, uh, and then I came to India in 2002 uh, to, to become a documentary photographer. I just wanted to change my life and do the things that I've always dreamt of doing. And, and these books um, are, are what I want to do. Uh, you know, and, and yes, the latest one is... Uh, is this book uh, on Indian weddings? It's uh, entitled um, uh, "Behind the Indian Veil: A Journey Through Weddings in India," uh -huh. and uh, and it's the work of uh, of more than six years, uh, where um, I mean it, it wasn't, of course, you know, it wasn't every day for six years, but uh, over the, the the course of, uh, of of about four or five years, I traveled as much as I could to to uh, different uh, weddings across India, trying to. Um, to find, of course, the, the, the real traditions, uh, Ladakhi uh, Buddhist and uh, Kashmiri Pandits and Kurgis and uh, Parsis and, and, and many more. And, and what I wanted to do is find a wedding where, where both of the couple, the, 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 groom, the bridegroom and the, and the bride are from the same tradition so that I could actually see mm. how this tradition, how this culture really celebrates the wedding. And... Uh, and I was uh, lucky enough and, and, uh, to, to get access to many, many families that, that allowed me uh, very in, to be very intimate and, and up close with them. Mm -hmm. um, the, the biggest challenge, uh, well, you know, one of the challenges, of course, was, was finding these weddings. And how do you, how do you right. find a Buddhist wedding? You know, <laughs> right, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, but but that proved to be uh, rather easy uh, eventually. You know, over time, you know, why, once I had to wait a year and a half for a Kashmiri pundit wedding because there's so few Kashmiri pundits. Uh, uh, none of them live in Kashmir by now, of course. Uh, but to find a Kashmiri pundit that was uh, both sides Kashmiri pundit took me. You know, I had to wait more than a year for the wedding. I see. Um, but the, the the real challenge was uh, was the edit. Um, you know, I, I realized that pretty soon that uh, it cannot be a book that is chaptered into different traditions. Um, the, the edit cannot look like someone else's wedding album. 
Right, all right, yeah. Uh, nobody's going to want to see it. Did you did uh, you work with did you work with a photo editor separately, or did you just sort of do it all yourself to, by yourself? Well, I, I I went back and forth, and and I'm, I think I'm about now in the, in the tenth edit. Uh, I did consult with uh, with some colleagues, uh, good friends who has uh, experience, you know, experienced photographers, and uh, um, even even the way the book looks now is 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 not gonna is not the final look because uh, uh, I'm lucky enough to to have an incredible designer uh, for the book. Uh, her name is Tanya Dasgupta, and she's she's designed uh, uh, books for very very uh, famous photographers. Uh, one of them is Prabhu Dasgupta. You might have heard. Sure. Um, she is uh, she is a very uh, opinionated and strong-minded uh, artist, and uh, sh I, I'm glad to to have the opportunity to work with her because I've I've been pursuing her for a long time, and because she's one person who can stand up stand up to me and say, uh, "Listen, Steffi, this picture is not going to be in the book," uh, or or otherwise, uh, this must be in the book despite the fact that you do not agree, and and you know she would stand up to me and. Um, and have her own opinion, and I and I, I admire that, and I'm sure that she's going to take the book uh, ten steps up above my work. So I'm very excited about that. Excellent. Uh, uh, so although we do have a dummy, uh, it's not a final dummy. Absolutely. It's not a final dummy, and uh, it's going to go into design uh, uh, now. Actually, now in the beginning of September, it's going to start design. Excellent. Well, it's interesting that you you are starting the design process also when you're about to start a campaign to raise money for this book, for the production of this book. Um, I yes. know the, your campaign uh, launches and kicks off on Tuesday, um, and you're hoping to raise $42,000. Um, and and it's, a, it's an incredible amount of money, but uh, the, the content itself is so captivating and so interesting. Uh, who do you suspect will be your your target audience for the book? Is it going to be photographers? Is it going to be folks who are just interested in seeing perhaps uh, in a vicarious way uh, the traditions of different uh, Indian uh, cultures, subcultures, and how they get married? What is your, what is your thought behind the book? Who's your, who well, are you I, I think, I, I think uh, yeah, most probably uh, uh, photographers and, and wedding photographers in specific, specifically are going to be uh, one of the biggest uh, target audiences uh, for the book. Um, uh, Indian weddings do take uh, center stage now with with most of wedding photographers around the world, and I think uh, they might be some you know a crowd that would find interest in the book at first. Um, but I, I do also think that a lot of people who, who have an interest in Indian culture uh, right. and traditions and traditions will, would like to uh, to take um, uh, you know to have a look and to own this book. Um, especially people from Indian communities abroad. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a huge Indian community in, in the UK, uh, in the US, uh, South Africa, uh, in other places, and I think that, uh, that they might uh, they might find it uh, attractive. Indeed. Uh, uh, would you would, would you say this is a book that hasn't? This is this is perhaps the first book in the, of its kind that's been that's been sort of challenged and has come up. Uh, based on the idea that you want to photograph every single community in India, I mean that's a pretty ambitious plan. Yeah. So, did did you? Well, there did, is there is no. Yeah, go, go, I, go ahead. There is no way on earth to 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 document every single community in India. There, you know, I'm yeah, I'm done with the book, and and people who 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 will see the book will say, oh yeah, but but you haven't gone there. I mean, you should have gone <laughs> there. You should have been this. <laughs> Um, yeah. uh, but I think I have I have about fifteen or sixteen different communities. I think it gives a very very good general picture mm -hmm. of the subjects of Indian weddings, mm -hmm. and uh, and what it's supposed to do is open a conversation. I, I encourage people to say, "Ah, oh, you should have gone there because if you had, you should have seen our tradition um, because we have this and this, and why didn't you show this?" and you know, and people would say, "Do you remember my cousin on you know like that wedding? That was great." You know, and I've seen people looking at the dummy and and just diving into the conversations on weddings. Right. Um, that's what it's supposed to do. If I compare it to my previous book on street food of India, there are a lot of recipes that are not in the book simply because they just did not lend themselves to a great picture. Mm. Uh, pakora, you know, uh, uh, is not. We don't have a picture of pakoras in the book. There's no. Uh, 
uh, Vadapa, no, Vadapa was there, but you know, there are other things that are not in the book, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. but it's enough, it's not an encyclopedia, it's just, it's just supposed to give you a taste. More than anything, more than anything, this book is, is uh, an attempt to, uh, to define the, the, the term Indian wedding from a visual point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because when, you, when you, think, uh, you think of an Indian wedding, what do you think? You know, most people would be thinking the colors, you know, mm -hmm. they would think the red, the tikka, the fire maybe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there, there are a few other things that they would be thinking. Some people who know the traditions in India better, you know, would have other ideas, but most of them would be very, very limited to their own culture. Right. And maybe some friends or family around, you know, maybe if you're a Punjabi, you maybe you saw a Bengali wedding and a Sikh wedding and, you know, etc. Right. Uh, but the thing is that when you, when you go and you travel across the country and you, and you document uh, uh, all these different traditions, uh, the incredible thing is that there is not one single element that is uh, similar in all Indian weddings. There is no definition to the term Indian wedding because uh, what it means is that uh, it could either be in India or that the, you know, the couple or one of them is Indian. Right. Uh, but other than that, an Indian wedding can also take place outside of India. So there is, no, there is not one little thing, not one ceremony, not one color, not one symbol that that goes as as a thread that that you know takes place in every single indian wedding there is nothing like that Interesting. and that's what okay. it's about it's it's about trying to define it from a visual point of view mm -hmm. and also tries to you know with the changing times and and the changing culture in india you know there are a lot of traditions that are that are uh, fading away, you know, into into modern times. You know, the couples don't have the patience to go through a four-hour wedding and uh, and a lot of um, influences from from different cultures uh uh you know go in and uh, to to others like uh, for example the mendi and sangeet that is now a part of so many different traditions uh and were never never a part of that, those before um so indian weddings are changing and cultures are changing and this this book also uh, gives uh, gives attention to those uh cultures and Maybe you know history will tell if uh, if for if for the future generation who will not experience them. Sure. Uh, but def but definitely uh, you know the tradition is thinning thinning out and uh, and, and a lot of uh, a lot of changes are happening culturally. Uh, you've chosen to photograph these weddings in a very particular way. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you know what what motivated you to approach weddings in this manner? Uh, well, when I approached weddings in this manner, uh, the way you say, I didn't know that I was approaching it in this manner. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to speak for you because uh, you know some people don't like the idea that uh, it's it's called documentary photography. Well, you're not really document. You know, it's all it's a fairly scripted moment in a way. Uh, in that sense, you know, people know where to be and where to stand and that kind of thing. Uh, so it's not really a, a, a true uh, documentation in that sense, but it is given how you know uh, chaotic and. No, but, but, I, but from my point of view, from my point of view, it is documentation. It is um, when when I came to my first wedding, uh, <laughs> I was I was uh, I mean it was great. It was a great wedding, great experience. But I was unlucky enough to land my the, the first wedding for the book, the first wedding I've ever shot in India was a Tamil Brahmin wedding in Chennai. And um, little did I know that it's going to take more than four hours. <laughs> and I had no idea what was the important moment. Yes. Which, uh -huh, which offering was the most important offering that I should not miss. Right. So I shot thousands of pictures at that wedding. And, um, and um, you know, I didn't know what, what, what was important. So I, I do not pose um, the, the couple. I, I'm, I'm no. there to... To, to tell the story the way I see it, um, so I didn't know that when I I mean I didn't I didn't have an approach when I started shooting. I just went out to this wedding and shot, and then another, and then another, and then another, and then I saw that you know actually nobody's shooting weddings like this in India, hmm. uh, and um, and, uh, and and following that uh, that you know in the last few years this, there was a, a major cha change and shift in in uh, Indian wedding photography. There are a lot of photographers. Uh, uh, 
um, shooting weddings now. Uh, some of them uh, maybe because they saw my work and they thought that, oh, well, you know, this is not wedding photography the way that we envisioned it. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be cool and it could be nice. And uh, uh, maybe, you know, if an international photographer is doing it, why shouldn't we? And, uh, and it's a good business also, you know. So, um, and now they call it candid uh, and, and this is a word that I don't like. Uh, <laughs> but, but documentary, I, I like the word documentary. Okay. I like calling myself a documentary photographer. That's what I wanted to do. That's, you know, that was my life ambition. So sure. if, I, if I'm a documentary photographer, then it's great. Indeed. Uh, the, how, how, many, uh, how many, approximately how many pages is this book going to be? And how many pictures are one can, can one expect from, from this book? Well, at the moment, uh, we're looking at 144 pages and, uh, and about 100 images. Of course, uh, as I said, uh, with, with the, the other eye of the editor, uh, mm -hmm. things might uh, move around a little bit. It's not going to be less than 144 pages, but it might come up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to keep the number of images around 100. Uh, so so it's, it's a general kind of size, you know, that, that that's what it's going to be. Uh, I think it's a good, uh, it's a good size. Um, it's it's big enough to to you know s satisfy your your appetite and it's, it's short enough to uh, to not uh, exhaust you. Um, Indeed, I've, I've, yeah, I think it's a good it's a good size. Well, uh, lastly, uh, what challenges have you uh, you know seen when it comes to launching a book project like this in India? Uh, well, you know, these are things that I'm just, I'm just uh, encountering now because when I was working on the book, I never, I never really thought about it. I was just uh, shooting because I wanted to do it. Right. Uh, and it's now when, when, you know, when I'm actually going, to, going into self-publishing and I look at it from, from a publisher point of view, um, you have to look at it from a, you know, business-wise, you know, is it viable? Is, are, are people going to buy it? Because otherwise, uh, you know, it doesn't have a right to exist. And, uh, and speaking with people, uh, uh, one thing that came up was that, um, uh, you know, there were a lot of projects done in India that were, were uh, uh, culturally uh, or community-oriented. Uh, someone told me that uh, if it was a, uh, a book uh, focusing on, on say, uh, Kashmiri Pandits, right. uh, that, it, that it would have a success among the Kashmiri Pandits. <laughs> uh, or a Tamil Brahmin, it would have a success in the Tamil Brahmin community. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but what you're trying to do is something that is pan-Indian, and uh, it's not limited to the to the uh, communities. So, uh, so who's going to buy it? Uh, that was one thing that that made me kind of think. All right, uh, where do I stand right now? So really, maybe kind of look at at uh, the, the target audience a little different. Um, you know, to trying to fit it into into a box in India. There's so many different boxes here, and I'm I'm I, I don't want to put it in a box. I want it to be an Indian book. Indeed. Uh, um, that is one thing, and I think that another thing is um, is something that I, I feel uh, um, that, uh, and I might be wrong, you know, but I I feel that that people in India still find it uh, uh, more difficult than than people, let's say, in the U.S. to to uh, say, all right, oh, yeah, this I, I like this. I'll I'll take my wallet out, take my credit card, and pay you know fifty dollars or a hundred dollars. You know, I think it's cool. Um, I think people in the U.S. are more used to using the credit card online, and I feel that uh, that uh, uh, you know, I, I fear that people in India might might be a little bit more uh, uh, concerned about this, a little more hesitant. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I'm, I'll be happy to to see that I'm wrong, but uh, that is that is. Uh, that is something's on my mind. Indeed, uh, I know it said last question, but uh, this is really my last question. Uh, right. you, you've chosen to to self-publish essentially, uh, yes. ver versus going the traditional route, which is you know you shop the book around and find a publisher who's going to take it on. Uh, why, why, why do this to yourself when you know there's lots of publishers out there who can actually help you, you know, publish it, distribute it, you know, do all the oh, that, all, all that, the legwork. That, They'll do everything for me. Yeah. Uh, and I did meet a lot of publishers, and, and some were interested, you know. Uh, but um, um, I, I've published a few books already, uh, some of them, you know, for, for clients and some, you know, some for me. Mm -hmm. um, 
I had some good experiences and I had some less less uh, successful experiences. And I find that uh, uh, the role of the publisher is not the same as it used to be a few years ago. Um, as a photographer, uh, there are new options that are open in front of us now uh, to enable us to take more control of, of uh, our vision and, and how we see it. I think that... Uh, uh, well, I, I almost know that there are very few publishers uh, around the world who would give the, the, the respect and, uh, and the space for, for who you are as an artist to, to produce something that, that is your vision. Mm. Um, and uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take back the, the power of, uh, of the image from, from the publisher to, to myself. I, wanna, I, wanna, I think that what I will do with this book will look better than what any publisher uh, will do be willing to do for me and the same like uh, what happened in the music industry where artists started uh, producing their own CDs and their own music um, uh, and circumventing the uh, the, the music um, producers uh, I think uh, it is possible to do now in the photography industry in the book uh, publishing industry there's a lot of uh, new avenues and uh, and I, I like doing new things uh, I don't think anything like this has been done before in India right right uh, I, I want to try. I want to do it, um, and I think that uh, that if I succeed, it will also uh, empower the community to to know that you know you have the power to do it. You know, see here, uh, people, you know, the crowd, the, the 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 people. It's not it's not any one CEO uh, mm-hmm. or publisher who, you know, who, to whose taste you have to to uh, uh, submit yourself. You know, the, the the people said that they like it. Uh, so go ahead. You know, work on your own projects and uh, and and. Surely it's more profitable uh, than, than working with a publisher. <laughs> it's like you, mm-hmm. you, right. it's, it's, it's a known fact that uh, publishing photography books is not uh, financially uh, worthwhile business. You, you know, uh, photographers used to publish books just to, to have a book right. uh, because they think, oh, it's so cool, I want to have a book. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's my work. It's, um, I've worked on it for six years, and uh, I don't see a reason why I should not earn from this. Um, Indeed. Hopefully, so hopefully, it'll, hopefully it will work, and hopefully I will be able to channel it into the the hands of the people that I hope uh, will get it and uh, and make it look the way I I want to make it look. Well, uh, Sefi, thank you so much for for joining us. I know I'll be the first one to sign up uh, on your campaign page to 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 pledge my support for this uh, book project. Uh, I always uh, always wanted a copy. I, I know I've I professed that. On Facebook, the many times you've uh, you've hinted at the the book uh, on online, I've always said, "Hey, can I have a book? Can I have a book?" Well, this is this is <laughs> this is my this is my chance to get the, get a book, and um, you know, it's a, it's it's definitely a very uh, it's a special thing for me to be able to support a friend as well uh, in, in terms of making sure that their their vision and their dreams come true. So uh, it really, it, I'm looking forward to. To, to, to holding the book and, and really getting into the book as well. Uh, I will link to the campaign page down below this video. So please, everybody who's uh, listening to this podcast, uh, make sure you click on it, check it out. Uh, the images will blow you out of the, of the water. It just It's amazing. Uh, I've seen more images, of course, and I'll have some, uh, some more samples that Sefi's going to send me uh, to display on my own blog. Uh, just let you know, there is uh, the fact that this campaign will start off on Tuesday, and I would love for every one of you to step in and pledge whatever you can to make this happen. Thank you, Sefi. Thank you so much, Seshu. Thank you very, very much. Take care.